used to seeing Fio, you know, they'd have the M11, the M11 Pro, the M15, then the M17, they've kind of gone up. Now we're kind of going back down to the M11S. And it's the kind of successor to the original M11 in a sense, whereas you could call the M11 Plus ESS, which I reviewed before, the successor to the M11 Pro. And the old ones, of course, used an old Android 7 system and really, were really slow. Now we have some fairly newer hardware, you could say. And But this is kind of, I don't know what S stands for, simplified or just S. <laughs> but we, it's, it's a, if, we're kind of going down the range, so we're getting fewer features. You can see it's physically smaller than an M11 Plus ESS. And we've got a slightly few, fewer number of features on here. For example, the fancy clicky, the fancy touch volume control, you don't get in the M11S. So it's just a push button thing. Or you can, you know, you still use the screen. But yeah. So let's take a look at what it can and can't do. Now, if you've seen some of my FIO videos before, you probably have seen this, but I'm just going to quickly cover, well, as quick as I can reasonably do, the main features in here, which you don't see in standard Android. So let's jump into the settings in here. Now, one of the big features that FIO has, which is very handy, is the mode chooser. Now, people are asking, you know, why would you buy a DAP like this instead of just buying a dongle? Well, the answer is there are a few features in this which are kind of handy. I mean, you can store music on this, whereas you have to use your phone otherwise, pretty much, if you just have a dongle, though you can't plug a dongle into a computer. But you can plug this into a computer as a USB DAC, which is one of the options. But you also have pure music mode, which is the first of the unique modes where it just boots the device straight into the Fio Music app. And that will limit you to kind of micro SD card stored music or DLNA server controls pretty much. But if you're just using that app only, that's kind of handy. So it kind of ends up being a somewhat like an Astel and Kern DAP in that mode. Now we have USB DAC as we already saw, but we also have Bluetooth receiving and AirPlay receiving. So you have to have already set up a Wi-Fi network. So those are a couple of options that are available there if you want to use this just as a kind of dumb device in that sense, but have input wired or wireless, or digital input wired or wireless, I should say. Most of the rest of this is fairly straightforward, but the audio has a couple of features, of course, because it has some things that you don't get on a normal Android phone. So we can also have the 3.5 millimeter and 4.4 millimeter outputs on the bottom can be set as line out. Now, if you don't quite understand what that means, let me give you a quick introduction to how these players work. You have a DAC in there, a chip, which does the decoding from digital to analog. Now, that comes out with an analog music signal and some high frequency noise we don't want. So the first thing that happens is that the music gets passed through a low pass filter, which is a does two things. It cuts out the high frequency noise that is not desired, and it also increases the voltage output. And then you go through a second stage for headphones, which increases the current output. Now you don't need the second stage if you're just you know, sending over a line out. So for a little bit higher sound quality, you have the option of bypassing the second stage, and that is the line out mode for both of these outputs. Now the 3.5 millimeter has a second option, which is as a digital output, SPDIF. If you want to say plug it into something, say you have a Mojo 2 or whatever, or you know, high stereo system or some other desktop DAC. Some people actually use these as just what you might call a digital transport, or as some manufacturers say, digital turntable, whereas it just transports the digital audio and doesn't decode it, you know, doesn't turn it back into analog. Now we have three gain modes, which are straightforward to explain. And we have the low pass filter mode and the digital filter essentially. And you can play around with those. Some people notice a difference, some people don't. It might be music and gear dependent. But again, one of those things that you is called, I call the audio rabbit hole kind of thing, which you can, I could spend an hour talking about and don't really want to. Uh, you can control if you want to manually set which Bluetooth output method you have. If you have headphone, Bluetooth headphones, which have multiple types of decode, codecs and you want to experiment with that, you can change that. You can opt, you can set if something is optimized whichever way for some people uh, out and about maybe say op the uh, mo highest audio quality LDAC may cut out and likewise if you have an LHDC capable pair of headphones or whatever again you have the same settings available there so again that's kind of trading off reliability versus quality so if you're at home like me and I'm living near you know nature where there's not much you know in terms of wireless to interfere that might work in high quality if I'm out and about you know in the city it might not and uh, a couple of other features down the bottom, which are you can have 
that line out I talked about, you can have adjustable volume at line out. So if you want to use this as a DAC slash preamp, like you can control the volume with this, then you can do that. All to DSD, uh, it will upsample everything to DSD before sending it to the DAC. That will use up a lot of battery and make the sound ever so slightly smoother. And it's a huge energy use penalty for slightly smoother sound. But, you know, some people like it. So just as a, it, something you can maybe play with or if you are using this connected to power might be a bit nicer in some ways. What happens is DSD tends to, you know, look blunt transients in, in, in music a little bit and that can, for some people, can sound a little bit nicer. Kind of like, you know, why some people like listening with uh, vinyl and other stuff, which is a little bit more bit smoother sounding. Now, Global covers a couple of things that are, of course, unique to this device, and well, I should say Fio DAPs in general. One of them is the multifunction button. And that's this button on the side here, and you can program that to any of these functions, although some of them only work in the Fio Music app itself. For example, I think it's Add to My Favorites, Switch Songs Randomly, delete the currently playing song will only work in the Fio Music app. I think it's those ones. I could be slightly wrong there because I don't use the Fio Music app so much. I'm using streaming. So that out of the way, there are a couple of other cool features that, I mean, if you haven't seen the Fio stuff before, what you find, might find very handy. Now, rotate screen. It was interesting, the other dApps that said automatically rotate screen, but um, I think they've fixed the meaning of this. There's no automatic about it. It's just a manual rotation option. Uh, the, another thing you can do is the screen itself, you can either have it double tap to wake up or and remember we saw in the multifunction button you could have that as the kind of lock screen wake up button as well. In vehicle mode is really handy. This basically, if power, it all it does is it set it so that if power is connected it switches on, if power is disconnected you get a, a few seconds of timer and then it just it powers off. And so that means if you have it plugged in to say a charger in the car, when the car is powered on it'll power up the DAP. When the car is turned off you get a bit of a countdown timer and then it will uh, power itself off. And I've actually used that, it's very handy. So other than that, you've pretty much got standard Android and there's nothing particularly special. I'll just mention storage in here and that, of course, I do have a micro SD card in here. It has 32 gigabytes of storage. And one of the questions I get often, which I'll talk about, well, I'll mention as quickly in the software, is, you know, can you use, can you download music from a streaming service like Apple Music or Cobars or Tidal or whatever? Yes, if that is supported in the app, yes, you can. And you can even select the micro SD card as the storage location for that, if the app supports selecting the storage location. So definitely there, and you can download, no problem. Now, if you want to look at the, well, about the device, again, we've got an old bit of hardware and it's worth mentioning here it's Snapdragon 660 okay it's nothing particularly special in terms of you know it's a few years old now and people have asked you know why can't this have a camera uh, you know why can't why can't they put cameras on them I mean I'd love to have a camera on there simply because there are so many things you could do with this if you had like front and rear facing cameras things like scanning QR codes for setting up software and and maybe some other features you could use this as a you know mini you know zoom device and the whole many lot of stuff you could do but the problem is that you know, I've talked to various manufacturers, and the thing is, the companies that make cameras for phones and, and screens and other parts and that, they have to find a company that will actually supply them. And you think that can't be hard? I mean, they're made by the millions. Well, it's not so simple. Imagine you're a company and you sell you know parts to whoever, like all the uh, the phone manufacturers. You know, selling millions of, of of parts at a time, and you get this small company saying, "Oh, can we just buy ten thousand? Are you going to bother?" And the answer is no. They're going to supply their big their big clients first, and if you're lucky, maybe you can find someone to supply, you know, for these small companies like Fio, which are relatively small compared to the phone companies, they have to find someone to supply this stuff. So who are going to actually bother to make the effort to give them a few thousand or whatever. So yeah, that's the reason why you can't, it's, we can't have everything we like. We want, you want to have everything but the actual phone stuff in here. And the other reason is some people have asked, why doesn't Fio make a phone? And I've got to say there's a huge difference between making a, a portable player where the only thing, the most complex a transmission it has to deal with is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi versus a phone which that suddenly ends, enters a huge quagmire of regulatory requirements and, and other crap and testing. And it's, it's not simply just, oh, let's just plug phone hardware in there. It's way, way, way more complex than that. And, you know, how does the phone transmission is going to be good, is it going to be bad? Do you want to say, is anyone going to buy something this chunky to put up against theory? You know, it's not as simple as it sounds. So 
Now we've talked about the hardware, let's talk about the software. So it's it's regular Android. Now, the Fio Music app itself, I recommend download this onto your phone. It's available for iOS and Android, and you can check the features out yourself. The stuff you can do is essentially the same. Now, you do have a couple of handy features for the Fio software. And again, if you want to, say, remote control this with your phone, you can use Fio Link, which can, has one you know controlled controlling device and um, a server device. And you also have things such as the, you have DLNA server, you know, DLNA available music. So we had, who's going to let me touch the screen? Local music and media server. So you can either have music that's on the micro SD cards or like a DLNA music servers where you can pull stuff over your network using DLNA. Other than that, it's a fairly straightforward music player, which does the usual kind of things. And again, I'd say download it and have a look at the features that are available as I think the phone versions are pretty much the same. And there may be only a couple of tiny differences in there in terms of what settings and things you can do compared to your um, compared to the standard Android and iOS versions. But if you're using other software, as I said, I've got Apple Music on here and Cobars, and I just set them to store offline music in a micro SD card as required. And that works fine. Some apps like, I think it was Cobars, would not load through the Google Play Store and I had to side load it. So some stuff will just, you know, it, it hasn't, it hasn't been approved to work. So that means if you, it does, say for example, if Cobars didn't work perfectly, then you couldn't complain to Cobars about it because they said, well, you couldn't, it wasn't, you know, we didn't check if it actually worked. But I mean, this stuff will work bit perfectly. I've already tested. I have another video about that. I mean, bit perfect in the sense that if you have high res music, it won't be resampled. In other words, you won't, you know, if you have high res, it won't be downsampled to 48K or whatever. Fio have put in their own modifications to the system to ensure that the output will be, you know, if you, if you have an app like Apple Music and you have a 192K file being streamed, you will get 192K. So that's something you don't have to worry about with this. But, you know, if you want to have ensure everything is absolutely perfect, you could download um, Universal Audio Player Pro. And then, like, if you're using something like another device, then you can ensure the best USB quality if you want. But I've tested it, and it seems to work out with, with bit perfect output through to devices with no problem so now you all want to know well how does it how was it with all of this so let's talk about that now for listening of course i pulled out some well actually some pretty high quality headphones and the reason for that is more that no i wouldn't expect someone to use say a pair of two thousand dollar you know final a8000s with something that's five hundred dollars i think you probably spend more but i wanted to kind of get some you know use stuff that i can hear clearly if there is a difference because I compared, of course, stuff that's fairly similar. We you know we have the two FIO players here. We have Hybe's R6 2020, and we have the K3 sitting back there as well, because as I said before, the hardware is kind of fairly identical. I also have these this FIO FH9 in for review. These are actually pretty nice, actually, and I'll talk about those in their own review. But mainly I kind of used the 8000, and um, I was kind of using the FIO one. I want to see how good the FIO scaled up if I changed between DAPs, for example, and, and also in for review of the good old, uh, was it Advar? The, the new Meze IEMs. Now for full-sized headphones, I wanted something that was both fairly easy to drive because I assume that if people do use these players with, they're going to be, we're going to be using, you know, fairly, you know, two, three hundred dollar headphones kind of thing. You're not going to be using two thousand dollar headphones, but I wanted something that was as easy to drive as a two hundred or three hundred dollar pair of headphones, but something that's very resolving so I could hear if there is a difference between these players. Now, of course, this is slightly disproportionate and I, I'm going to say off the bat, and something I've said before in other videos that under under $1,000 players are not going to be good at driving full-sized headphones. You just have, it's not about how much power you have, they have other limitations. It's sort of like you can have two cars with about the same amount of output power, but I mean, I could say my Subaru, car analogies suck, but I'm going to do this anyway. My Subaru is turbocharged, but its maximum output is only 125 kilowatts, but it has so much torque, it accelerates much faster a fair bit faster than some other cars which only which have 125 kilowatts of power so it's not really about maximum power it's kind of i suppose it's like it's about torque kind of thing you could say the the electrical equivalent of torque is something you're going to notice in the difference say for example the m11s and m11 plus limited and you know have more power than this k3 total in balanced output but there was a clear audio di audible difference between these two players and i mean they had, all three here have about the same kind of power output less than three quarters of a watt but you know and you but you notice the difference in the kind of the quality of components and, and the kind of setup that you you have between them 
So, for example, someone was saying, you know, oh, wow, this new amp that, that, that we're talking about has, you know, uh, six watts of output or whatever. And I said, my main amp has 1.2 watts of output, and it just, you know, it's way better than a lot of stuff that has a lot more power. So it's not so much about power, but, you know, you notice that the capabilities of a device when you start putting it under some kinds of load. So my torture test today was these. Meze lyrics with a track Cradle to the Grave off a uh, motion picture soundtrack, and I'll have that in the link in the description. And it has some low bass, like down to about 20, 20 hertz ish. It's designed with a low rumble for use in a cinema. And cinema soundtracks are really fantastic tests, so they're often really high quality. But I wanted to torture test it because you're going to notice when you have a limp power, not so much a power limit, but a driving ability limit in a device such as this, you're going to notice it in the bass first, especially with something like planar headphones. So that was a kind of, I wanted to test that its limits. Now with in-ear monitors, there was certainly a difference. I mean, the good old A8000s, they're very resolving. They're kind of bright as well, so you notice any kind of harshness or anything unpleasant. Now, of, of course, Fio designed their DAPs to have, you know, low TH performance so harmonic distortion and people i think a lot of people must not understand this is like if you have you know if you hit middle c on the piano and then you hit the next c up or the next c down that's how that's in harmonies because it's it they're just multiples of the same frequency and harmonic distortion if you have a one kilohertz tone you might have two four eight sixteen it's in harmony if you play all those tones together they sound pleasant so in reducing the thd these players, or I should say t low THD devices, they'll tend to have higher intermodulation distortion than harmonic distortion. Intermodulation distortion is where you have two non-harmonic notes or something like non -harm lack of harmony. It's a nastier, less pleasant kind of distortion. So in eliminating that, in just chasing these numbers to appeal to people who like low THD or who just don't understand what they're, what they're looking at when it terms of measurements, you tend to sound have a very kind of it sounds sound very clear, but maybe not so what you know you, one of those awful audio file terms musical. So I think that's why people tend to prefer you know R to R players and and now even dongles because they just have that heart, slight harmonic distortion is actually nicer. Whereas you don't want that into IMD, which is the nasty distortion. So in that I mean I mean I didn't find it this to be any more harsh sounding. And the K three is neither. K3 is actually pretty impressive as a device goes for something that just plugs straight into your computer. And even though it has a little bit less power because it's limited from by you know USB power, whereas this isn't is only limited by the battery, which can probably carry a fair bit more current, in that you it you know it's it played back fine. Um in it I can't say anything particularly special or not special. It was about the same kind of performance and A being between them after level matching them was tediously I found that essentially the same performance as an R6 2020 so that's kind of what you'd expect and it when you, you know, torture testing them I think it's only in the full-sized headphones that you know if you turn the volume up loud with stuff that say got a strong mid-range they start it starts to get shouty if you you know the cradle to the grave and and other music there was definitely a jump up in sound quality to the M11 plus like distinctly better sound quality I was listening to some, and I'm going to might pronounce her name wrong, Anna, Anna Brun, and that particular track, if I can find it on here, uh, the dynamics of that, I, I wasn't that one, it was, here we go, what's happening, it was this one, what's happening with you and him from Anna Brun, just like the individual notes, like in mid-range or a treble or whatever, just was so much more distinct from the M11 Plus, like very distinctly better. So there was a if you want the better sound quality there was there was a distinct jump up with this, and I guess that a lot of that is down might be down to the THX amp. I think that actually of THX amps and they tend to have a bit of a mixed reputation because some of the desktop ones were a little bit they focused on having good THD and not having actually good drive so much. They tended to sound a little bit flat and bass weak. I didn't find that the Fio, like the M11 Plus ESS or the M17, sounded flat like some THX amps can. And again, it comes down to implementation. But what you, and you know, the actually good dynamics out of the, the Plus ESS. With the M11S, I mean, it wasn't bad. It just kind of sounded a little bit more muted in terms of like, you didn't get that snap out of it, you know, out of notes that you can, where the, everything was a little bit more blended together. 
but it didn't sound like bad or anything. It just wasn't so, well, I suppose dynamic is the, is the word I like to use. And it, actually the performance seemed similar to the K3. So I'm going to call the M11S essentially a K3 and a DAP. And, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, you think, oh, the K3 is only cheap. The K3 actually performs really well. Now, I'm overdue for shooting a video on it, but I, I got I asked Fio for these for review, including the, the old, um, what is it, E10K, or the new E10K, because they were the standard recommendation when you're getting getting into head fire, you know, something better than the crappy sound card in your laptop. And actually, I'm pretty impressed by the, the performance, consider, all things considering. They're pretty well built inside too. So actually having something that's, you know, five a... a DAP version of an E10K actually is pretty decent. Now, I wouldn't go overboard in you know spending you know a thousand dollars on a pair of in ear monitors to use with this. If you're going to be spending anything, getting anything nice like a you know thousand dollar plus pair of say I, I like Campfire Audio for example, or maybe even like these Fios, then I would just jump up to the the Plus ESS personally. I think the Plus ESS was kind of the minimum that I kind of like and can listen to. And, but if you're going, you know, you have some cheaper stuff, maybe even cheaper headphones, you want something basic, or you just don't need all the fancy volume control and stuff, you just need a digital transport, then the M11S fits the bill because you have all this stuff that you might not use in the M11 Plus ESS. But I can't say, you know, it's not going to be particularly fantastic performance, but I mean, that's what you get. A lot of people are pretty satisfied with the R6 2020, but you're not going to be getting you know, huge amounts of volume out of these. I mean, I could hit max volume there. That was with Cradle to the Grave. So you're not getting a lot. I mean, you can, it's not about power so much, but the gain is just not going to be that high. And it's the power delivery is obviously limited in this. So for any monitors, say for less expensive any monitors, fine. I thought, fine. Maybe up to, I don't know, maybe up to $1,000 for preference. For, you know, something to use with Bluetooth headphones. Yeah, sure. I hope that gave you kind of overview of how these, of where this sat. Now, don't forget I have a site here.audio and you can read written reviews of some of the gear on here. You can see which is my latest video up there as well. And there'll be some news and stuff that's come out as well. And also I have a Patreon. So if you'd like my buying advice, people like, if you want to test stuff out, compare to how, you know, this works with that or this pair of headphones with this, Help me out a little bit. It's like, you, I always say, like buying me a cup of coffee and I'll happily test stuff out for you and um, help you make decisions because, you know, you might be spending hundreds of dollars and stuff. Help me out with a couple of bucks. If you do get an M11S and you're actually watching this because you're wondering if your experience has been the same as mine, do post your impressions below because I would like to know if, as a user, you have the same impressions and it will also help out other people as well. I mean, my impressions are one thing. It's another thing to have a user have impressions and it'll help other people make the decision whether to buy this or not. So as always, thanks once again for watching and uh, I look forward to seeing you online.